How's it going everyone? My name is Tech Support Sparky, and today we're going to go over how to sanitize a corruption. Now up at the top right side of the screen, we have an emulation running. This is Super Mario Bros. And you can see there's a slight green color tint applied to everything. Now this is a corruption that I'd like to keep as an example, so we're going to sanitize this corruption. However, you'll notice immediately that there's no music going on, Mario is not able to move, and that's because this emulation has actually crashed. And this is the perfect scenario where you'd like to sanitize the corruption in order for Mario to still be able to move around, but you have the green color tint applied to everything. Now if we move over here to the blast editor on the left side, you'll see there are a lot of memory writes. Each individual one of these units is a memory write to RAM with a specific value. And there's actually 55 of these here, as you can see at the top right. Now we can try manually disabling some of these units here just by clicking on the check mark off here to the left and attempting to load the corruption once again. However, you'll notice the music stops immediately and Mario is actually still in place. While we still have the green color tint, we're not any closer to actually getting the game to run. And it can take quite a while, <laughs> excuse me, quite a while to individually disable all of these here, especially with larger blast layers of say size 1000, 2000, or much larger. So instead we're just going to utilize this button here that says randomly disable 50%. And when you click that, a bunch of these gets disabled. You'll see the check marks are now unchecked. And we'll load this once again. In this case, the music sped up as if we have a, uh, a star, and our green color tint actually isn't there anymore. So what that tells me is that the 50% that we disabled in this blast editor actually contained the corruption that we were looking for. So what we can do in this case is we can invert the ones we disabled, essentially we're selecting that other half of the 50%, and we'll load the corruption again. And in this case, that is correct. We see the green color tint, however, the game is still crashed. But since the green color tint is the corruption that we're looking for, this is a uh, sort of green light that we can remove the 50% that we disabled. So we're going to hit this remove disable button. And you'll see we have considerably less memory writes remaining on the blast layer. In fact, we now have 27. So we're going to continue along that fashion by hitting randomly disable 50% once again and loading the corruption after we unpause it. And again, we run into the problem where we don't have the green color tint and there's actually a couple other things going on like Mario isn't on screen. So this is a different corruption, one that we don't want to keep. So we're going to invert it once again, select that other 50%. And we'll load the corruption. And this is what we're looking for. In this case, we actually do see Mario on screen, so we're getting a little bit closer to getting this emulation to run. So we're going to remove disabled once again, and disable 50%, and unpause it to load corruption. And even though it doesn't look like anything's changed, like there's still that monotone music in the background, Mario hasn't moved, there's nothing else on screen, we can still remove this 50% because those memory writes were unnecessary to our corruption. And once again, we'll randomly disable 50%, unpause it, and load corruption. And we actually hear that that monotone sound is still playing, and yet the green color tint isn't here. So what that tells me is if I invert the ones I disabled, that we're no longer gonna hear that musical tone in the background, just that one monotone one, and all we're gonna have is just the uh, the green color tint, and maybe we'll even have the game running. So let's go ahead and unpause it, and load corruption. And that's actually exactly what we see, so this is what we're looking for. The game runs for the most part, let's see if we can move, we can. So we can actually now play the entire game, probably with this green color tint. I'm gonna click over here in the blast editor and remove disabled again. I'll turn that down a bit. Except we still have three memory writes, and just in case, just to be sure, we're gonna remove those excess two. There might be two memory writes that are unnecessary that might crash the game later on. And we wanna be absolutely sure that there's just the green color tint and nothing else on the, on the ROM or on this blast layer. So once again, we can randomly disable 50%. Since there's three here, we could probably just manually go through and disable them, but just for, uh, for sameness sake, we'll still use the random disable 50% button. Load the corruption again, and we'll see that the one we disabled actually probably contains our green color tint, because these other two, the ones that are selected, don't have that green color tint. So we're going to invert the ones we disabled once more, load the corruption, 
and that does seem to be the case. We now have the green color tint, and we can remove those other two. And now we have a final memory write, where we set the value in RAM at source address 779, with the value of 59 in hexadecimal. Also source address 779, I believe in hex as well. So that's actually a sanitized corruption, we're all set. We can send this to our stash, and you'll see that appear in your stash history down here. And if you want, you can throw it onto a stockpile and name it something if you'd like. Uh, we're going to play a little bit more with the Blast Editor here. Since we can edit these values and load them immediately, we can take a look at, say, what does this parameter value do? Now my assumption is this probably controls the color tint, maybe it changes the color, maybe it's just a how much green is on the screen. Let's try setting that to just 0, 0. And if we load the corruption, nothing seems to be on screen. Let's try a maximum value of FF. In this case, we actually get a grayscale effect. So you can kind of see why sanitizing the corruption is important, because if we knock it just down to one memory write, we can manipulate this memory write to see sort of what changes with the parameter values that we send to this source address. Uh, instead, what's to do? We had 5.9 originally, we can do 3.0. Load that corruption. Now we have sort of a pink sky. And this, I mean, you can sanitize any sort of effect if you have a, a mechanical effect on the player, if you have a musical corruption or visual corruption, <laughs> excuse me, visual corruptions. Uh, those are all sanitizable. You can sanitize any of those without any issue. And it's a good practice to get in the habit of. Um, you don't want to be able to play the game for only two seconds and then it crashes. I mean, it's just, uh, that's not fun to play. Um, if I wanted to complete the entire game with a pink sky, I should be able to. So that's how to sanitize the corruption. Thank you for watching. My name has been Tech Support Sparky, and happy corrupting.